this video exercise, we will demonstrate how to generate a large focus library of chemical compounds using the interactive enumeration panel in the material science suite. More specifically, we will describe the process of starting with a single scaffold molecule, in this case MCP shown here, and rapidly enumerating various R group fragments commonly found in OLED materials to design a focus library of OLED host materials all based on the original MCP scaffold. So let's begin. Here in the material science suite, let's create a new project by going to File, New Project. We'll call it MCP Derivatives, then Save. Next, we can either import our scaffold or simply show the Edit toolbar and click on the 2D sketcher to sketch in the scaffold. Click Create New Entry and we'll call it MCP. Now we have the core scaffold MCP in the workspace. Next, let's use the interactive enumeration tool to generate a focus library around this core. We'll go to Tools, Interactive Enumeration. Note there are two tabs. Combinatorial Library displays the controls for defining the core, whereas the Fragment Collection tab displays controls for defining the various R group fragments which will be attached to the core. Let's begin with the Combinatorial Library tab. Since our MCP core scaffold is already in the workspace, we'll choose Import From Workspace and then click Import. Next, in order to build the library, one can either use a pre-built fragment collection file or one can build a fragment collection from scratch over in the Fragment Collection tab. For now, we will use a pre-built file containing fragments commonly found in the chemical space of OLED materials. And toward the end of this video, we will return here to describe how to build a fragment collection library from scratch. To set the pre-built collection file, we'll click Set from the default collection file option, and then choose the OLEDsubs.bld file. Now that the fragment collection has been set, we can define the position for the R group enumeration by selecting the bonds in the core, which become marked by the colored arrows. So here we have marked one attachment position in which the hydrogen will be replaced and enumerated with all the fragments in the collection file that we just set, which you can see contains five fragments. As we choose more attachment positions, notice how the number of structures in the combinatorial library increases. Here, we'll just choose seven sites, which corresponds to five fragments to the power of seven sites, equating to roughly 78,000 individual structures. Now, there's also the option of adding methylene linkers between the core and the fragment. However, we won't use them in this example, so we'll keep the minimum and maximum linkers to zero. Here, we can confirm the fragment collection file that will be used, containing the five fragments. We can quickly take a look at the fragment collection tab to view these fragments, again each of which is commonly found in the OLED chemical space. Now again, we'll discuss this tab in more detail later on, but for now we can quickly see there are options for importing additional fragments or creating new fragments from scratch, and the right click menu has additional options such as removing fragments. Also, there is the option to apply only selected fragments rather than all the fragments at a given attachment position. Back in the Combinatorial Library tab, once we are satisfied with the attachment positions and the fragment collection file to be used, we can click Enumerate. For the job settings, we'll append the output to the project table. However, if you intend on generating a very large library with hundreds of thousands of structures and where each structure has many atoms, then you may want to set this to Do Not Incorporate to avoid overloading the project table. We'll use the localhost and optionally rename the job. Then we'll click Start. For combinatorial libraries with 10 to 1000 structures, the job may take a few minutes and much longer for larger libraries. In practice, the MS Combi engine is capable of generating virtual libraries containing up to millions of compounds. Once the job finishes, we can see all 78,000 structures, clearly a very convenient and efficient means of generating large chemical libraries. Notice that each is labelled with the applied substituents in brackets. 
This library is now ready for further analyses featured within the material science suite, such as DFT optimizations or optoelectronic calculations, among many others. In order to create a fragment library within the Fragment Collection tab, simply click Create to open the Create Fragment Collection panel. The Palette tab will list all the structures that we can use to create a fragment for library enumeration. Now, as you can see, it is blank, so we can either import structures or we can sketch structures manually. For this example, let's sketch a simple fragment. Once sketched, click Add Structures. Back in the Palette tab, we can see it listed in the table. So, by using the sketcher, we can very quickly add new structures to the Palette table. Now, before we add structures to the fragment collection, we first need to define the attachment bond. This can be done by selecting the structure, clicking on a bond to define the attachment, and clicking Add. Once this is done, click Close to go back to the Interactive Enumeration panel. And now, these fragments are ready to be applied to the attachment point defined on the core. Or, if you intend on reusing these fragments, then it would be wise to export it to a fragment collection file.